All right, YouTube, once again, it's Gunnar Vernon Stewart here for the podcast, talking to Auburn football. We're in the midst of game week. Auburn taking on the University of Massachusetts, better known as UMass, the Minutemen. They're actually a little bit better known for their basketball prowess than football, but they had a string um, in the early 2000s where they actually were pretty good in football, but that was at the FCS level. Go ahead and let's get the comment section active like this video comment and subscribe to vernon speak sports auburn we got the prediction show coming tomorrow now I, i'm gonna tell you um before i do that want to give a big shout out to all the auburn content creators uh all about auburn war rapport um all of those guys that that work really hard to make this content unique um jake crane um, there's another, there's another guy that I, I just can't think of right now that is actually doing a really good job with the Auburn content. Um, and, uh, we're, we're just gonna, we're really excited about this season. It's Wednesday and a lot of the predictions are starting to come out. I'm actually going to do my prediction show tomorrow. Um, oh, Zach Blackerby, my goodness, a really good content creator. I uh, just came to mind. My bad, Zach. I just, you know, at, at the point of attack, just couldn't remember um, your name. But you do an incredible job and uh, brain drain. Uh, they do a good job. So I think, you know, this thing is wide open. There's a lot of interest in covering Auburn football because it's such a unique uh, situation with Auburn when you talk about them from a football standpoint, because one Always exciting to watch. If you look at Auburn when they are on during the season, ESPN loves Auburn. I mean, they just love them. I mean, it's because you have the flair of dramatics. It's always a, a competitive situation. And you think about Cal, for example, when Auburn plays Cal, let's just say by chance, Cal does beat Auburn. See, if you are out of conference team, SEC has this thing to where folks just want to beat SEC schools. If you want to match up with an SEC school, Auburn is kind of sort of your your go to because Auburn is not Vanderbilt, but Auburn isn't Alabama either. So if you beat them, it 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 gives you kind of a notch on the belt because look. Auburn historically has competed very well in the SEC, several SEC championships, two national championships, a handful of SEC appearances, a handful of undefeated seasons. So if you beat Auburn, it still gives you that notch under your belt. Let's say, hey, we beat a good SEC team. We beat an SEC team that, you know, traditionally gives Alabama trouble, could, uh, traditionally gives LSU trouble. Hopefully we'll start to give georgia trouble and we'll see where that goes like the video comment and subscribe to vernon speak sports auburn down in deep south college football is king and on the plains of auburn the battle cry is war eagle we're talking about auburn versus umass and what are we talking about tonight we're not doing the prediction show we already talked about some of the key players for massachusetts but I want to talk about some of the players that I'm really excited to see. Some of the players to watch for Auburn going into this game. And one, yeah, I, I, I want to see Peyton Thorne, but Peyton Thorne has experience. I'm not really worried about what he's going to bring to the table because he's had that, you know, he, he, he's got that, that track record to where he's played in some big games. Um, and there are a few other guys that, you know, we could talk about. But some of my main few are number one at the top of the list. And for several reasons, which I'll explain, Jarquez Hunter. Jarquez Hunter is going to be asked to do a little bit more. I remember myself being a guy that came off the bench as a sophomore, junior well, actually a sophomore in basketball as the sixth man. See, as the sixth man, you're able to kind of watch, you kind of able to see what is going on 
um, where the game tempo-wise is going, and then coach puts you, puts you in. And you, matter of fact, that was my favorite role to play when I was playing basketball. Is that six man because I can kind of see the trajectory of where the game is going. I can kind of settle in, and I can come in and kind of do my thing. Ironically enough, as the six man, hell, I might as well have been a starter because. Many times when I was a six man in basketball, once I got in, I didn't come out because I had studied and surveyed how things were going and it was just a good fit. Now, for some of you all that don't really know how sports go, you probably won't understand that little conversation I just had, but that's what we got. Jarquez Hunter was that guy. He could he he didn't have to take the initial carries. He didn't have to take the initial brunt of the running game. And he was kind of able to survey what was working, what was not working, and then kind of be thrown in. But now Jarquez Hunter, according to the depth chart, that Hugh Free says he doesn't really care about. He didn't even know about. He said the sports information direct, they put that out. He doesn't do depth charts. But either way, Hugh, I'm sorry, here's the depth chart. Jarquez Hunter, according to the depth chart, is your starter. And he's a guy that hasn't started but has done some great things. Luckily, historically, Hugh Freeze doesn't really have a situation where the running back takes the load, so to speak. There, I, I did the research. I looked backwards and forwards. There's not a single thousand yard running back in at Hugh Freeze, whether he was at Ole Miss and Liberty. As a matter of fact, at Liberty... Malik Willis was the leading rusher. He had 944 yards. If he, he would have got 60-something 60, 60 more yards, he would have been that 1,000-yard rusher. So Jarquez Hunter, I want to see where he fits in this, especially with having Damari Austin and Brian Battier. I, I just want to see that. And Sean Jackson is going to take some of the load. I don't think he puts a lot of emphasis on the running back being the feature of the offense based on stats and based on what I've seen before. The next guy up, I think Jarquez Hunter is going to be magnificent in this offense. The next guy up is Damari Austin out of College Park, Georgia. Had some flashes of, of uh, productivity last year. I want to see what he's going to do. I mean, he's been working out. With some guys, Brad Lester, um, who is the running back guru, very a very entertaining guy, former Auburn running back, had some great moments at Auburn, uh, to where he, you know, he showed some flashes of uh, some really good things at Auburn. He's a good, good, good guy. Good, you know, did some good things and training these guys. Man, did y'all see Tank Bigsby the other day? Other than the fumble, this guy is. He's going to make some some significant moves at Jacksonville as a Jaguar. So Damari Austin is another guy that I'm looking at as a player to watch in this particular football game. One of my favorite guys that had, I mean, super limited action, but he made some moves in that Western Kentucky game last year. He only had two catches for 34 yards, but Jay Fair is a guy that I'm really looking at to possibly be a difference maker coming into this game and into this season. Jay Fair is very quick. He's out of that Texas market. Man, they take football really seriously in Texas. So I I, I really want to see what he's going to do um, at Auburn. On the defensive side of the football field, I'm looking at the defensive line as my point of reference, as my favorite, some guys that I'm looking at to watch. Kendra Falk, a freshman out of Holland Home in Alabama. He's not a starter, but he's second string. I want to see what he's going to do. Highly recruited, highly touted. I think he could possibly be a huge addition to this Auburn defense. And last but not least is Elijah McAllister out of Vanderbilt. That Jack linebacker. That Jack linebacker is so important because they're asked to do so many things. They're asked to rush the quarterback. They're asked to anchor their side of the football field. And every now and then, they might be asked to 
cover the football, uh, cover the running back in the flat or cover the flat every now and then. Elijah McAllister has earned that starting position, was one of the transfer recruits for Auburn. We're going to see what he's going to do. Like this video, comment, and subscribe to Vernon Speak Sports Auburn. And as always, it's great to be an Auburn Tiger, War Eagle.